Every day, you as patients ask your surgeons the wrong question. It's a question whose answer gives you confidence in your surgeon, hope in the outcomes of what may be a complex procedure, and relief to some of the concerns that you are certainly having. How many of my surgeries have you done before may sound like a very simple question, but it is far more complex because not only do you have the question wrong, but the answer that you're expecting is also incorrect. And even if your surgeon reluctantly answers that question, they will be doing so in a very inaccurate way. The reason is obvious. All of us are different. We differ in our external features, height, weight, and so many other characteristics. The same concept applies for our internal structure. So no matter how many times your surgeon has performed a procedure, they will have never experienced your surgery until it's done. And the reasoning behind that question is as surgeons perform procedures over and over again, they gain a wealth of knowledge. And surgeons who are able to take the knowledge of your case and apply it to the knowledge of a previous case they have done to accurately predict the outcomes of your surgery are the experts in the field. But when faced with the countless anomalies and variations of complex surgery, especially cancer surgery, even our best experts' predictions become inaccurate and sometimes even wrong. Unfortunately, exposing patients to longer operations, excessive blood loss during the surgery, and sometimes even complications, which may be lethal. What if there was a way or a technology where I could take the knowledge of your surgery and give it to your surgeon days before you walk into the operating room and have your surgeon use that knowledge to perfect the real thing? Well, for the last three years, our team at the Simulation Innovation Laboratory, University of Rochester, have been working on perfecting such a technology. Using a combination of 3D printing and polymer casting, we are now able to produce accurate, lifelike organ models. But it's not any model. It's your model. This is a replica of one of my patient's kidneys that looks, feels, and acts like the real thing would during an operation. And the reason for that is we used their CAT scan as a template. And the process starts by taking patients' CAT scans and importing them into a 3D segmentation software, which enables us to individually localize each component of the kidney, and then combine it into a virtual three-dimensional computer-aided design, which can then be fed into a 3D printer. But if I want to produce the lifelike characteristics of human tissue, I cannot directly print this in hard plastic. So instead, our team develops a technique by which we print negative molds, which are then injected with a hydrogel that is adapted to mimic the characteristics of human tissue. It can be as soft as fat and as stiff as muscle. But if I want to predict the outcomes of surgery, I have to reenact every single step of the procedure. I can't just take this kidney and cut through it in my kitchen table. I need to put the surgeon in the environment, which is the operating room, and have them use the same instruments they would in the live surgery. So to achieve this realism, all the organs within a 10 centimeter radius of his kidney were also processed. And they were placed in their anatomical location within a body cast, and then taken down into the operating room and hooked up with bodily-like fluids so that the model can bleed. And that created a realism that was never encountered before. What we like to call this is a surgical rehearsal, because that's truly what the surgeon is doing, rehearsing the surgery before the live event. To bring this into context, I want to share with you the story of this patient, because they were the very first patient that we used this technology on. CM, as I would call him, is a 69-year-old male who presented in my clinic with a nine centimeter mass occupying almost half his left kidney. But this patient was also hypertensive, diabetic, and had a very strong family history of kidney disease, making him more vulnerable to dialysis. 
if I want to truly, safely remove this tumor, I would need to remove the entire kidney. But that would change his life forever because he would need dialysis, meaning he would need to be hooked up to a machine three times a week for three-hour sessions to filter his blood. Alternatively, I can only cut the tumor out, but that would expose him to another risk, which is uncontrollable bleeding during surgery. Because the blood supply of the kidney acts like a tree trunk and its branches. The closer you get to the center of the kidney, the larger the blood vessels you're going to encounter while you're cutting through it, and the more difficult it is to control them during surgery. So I was faced with a dilemma. Do I take out this patient's kidney and change his life forever? Or do I undergo this risky maneuver and put him at risk for uncontrollable bleeding, which might also end up with removing the kidney? And as any helpless surgeon, I asked my patient, what do you think I should do? <laughs> and the patient's response, Dr. Ghazi, I trust you. You're going to do everything you can to save that kidney. But in reality, all I could do was play back the surgery in my head over and over again. At that same time, our lab had a major breakthrough in developing patient-specific models. So I decided to take this for a run. We made a model of this patient and put it in a body cast and took it to the operating room. And as expected, we had an extensive amount of bleeding in the surgery or in the rehearsal. Now, had this happened in the real event, I would have to remove this patient's kidney and he would be on dialysis for the rest of his life. To tell you the truth, at that point, I felt deflated. We had put in so much effort and accomplished nothing. I was going to have to go to this patient and tell them, you're going to be on dialysis for the rest of your life. But then as I was cleaning this model, I realized that I was literally doing an autopsy on this patient's kidney. I could find out what went wrong and correct it during the surgery. I was excited. I went back to the drawing board, and after examining the kidney and examining the three-dimensional design, I realized that there was this sweet spot where I could remove the entire tumor with negative margins and stay away from those major vessels that were bleeding. We'd still have bleeding, but not as much as those major vessels, so I could control it during the surgery. I rehearsed the procedure over and over again, up till the night before his surgery. That day in the morning, I told my patient, there is light at the end of the tunnel. There's a chance I can preserve both kidneys, and you can get the best of both worlds. So I went in, and we did the surgery, and that's what happened. And we encountered almost this bloodless plane where I was able to successfully remove the tumor with negative margins while preserving the rest of the kidney with minimal blood loss during the surgery. And that was because of the knowledge I got from these rehearsals. This patient is now two years out, tumor-free, and not on dialysis, living a normal life. <laughs> what was striking to me was our first interaction that I remember till this day. When he was emerging from anesthesia, and you're not all there when you're doing that, and he looked at me, and I told him, yes, you still have both your kidneys. His answer was so inspiring. It was as if he was speaking from his subconscious. He said, yeah, doc, you told me that a couple of hours ago. <laughs> and that hit me so hard. And I have successfully done this in over 20 patients now with amazing results and improving their quality of life, but with an added reduction in operative time, blood loss, fewer complications, and even a shorter hospital stay. And it's amazing the impact that this technology can have on healthcare, our patients, and their families. But, and unfortunately there always is a but, the dream or the vision of having this technology or having surgeons worldwide practice their complex procedures on models like these remains a dream. And the reason is not that this is expensive or it's unavailable. But believe it or not, it's the surgeons that are reluctant to undergo the rehearsals. Let's face it, all us surgeons have egos, and huge ones. <laughs> and I have a right to say that because I'm a surgeon. 
we spent years of our lives going through relentless hours of work in very stressful situations. And we even put away our personal growth and our families to practice a specific skill set until we are finally certified and recognized by our peers and the community to become surgeons. And at that point, we are reluctant or even arrogant enough to believe that we do not need to practice before a surgery, even if it's on a model of our own patient. And I really, truly believe that every one of us surgeons hides behind their wall of certificates, believing that they are invincible and they do not need a technology like this to improve patients' outcomes. So why am I giving this talk here? Why am I not giving this talk to the board of directors of a hospital or an insurance company or the American College of Surgeons? Well, I've given all those. <laughs> but I believe the group that is going to benefit the most from this technology are the patients that we operate on every single day. And they are the ones that should be the strongest advocate for this technology. Because if they request it from their surgeons, their surgeons will comply. So the next time you're having a complex surgery, ask your surgeon the correct question. Are you willing to rehearse my surgery? That is going to be the future of surgery. Thank you.